Howdy, my people. You guys, today we are gonna talk with one of my favorite people on YouTube. He is the Bronx Blogger. I will, of course, put his video link down below. Um, he is a member of the group Antifa. Am I saying that right, uh -huh. Bronx? Uh, okay, let me clarify. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> no, you're, 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 you're half right. Okay. Um, I, 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 I'm an anarcho-communist first. Um, that's my, my political moral philosophy, and I'm in solidarity with anti-fascist action. I'm, I'm uh, present in the New York chapter of New York anti-fascist uh, action. Well, just, just a minor, a minor edit. I understand. Okay, so then is that Antifa? What you're talking Antifa about? Is a, uh, Antifa is an abbreviation for, for the, the, that group. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you are affiliated with them, but not actually a yeah. member of them? Yeah, I'm not I'm not a black bloc member or um, you know, I, I'm I'm not um I'm not as street oriented. I'm more like a, a, a movement a movement uh political person. You know, I gotcha. like to go to meetings and rallies and stuff like that. But I mean I don't run around bashing mailboxes or stuff. <laughs> okay. Well see right. Okay. So this is why I invited mm -hmm. Bronx on was to learn because mm -hmm. you guys have know you know that I have talked a little bit about the Antifa thing and I mm -hmm. do not know an awful lot about it. Um I think maybe I might be a little bit misled about it, which is why I wanted to bring him on so that I could learn more about this movement and um mm -hmm. aspects of it aspects of it that I may not fully understand. What exactly is the difference between black block and Antifa? Black Bloc, the Black Bloc tactic is a product of anti-fascist action in Germany in the 1980s. And it was applicable to the situation in Germany at the time. It is not, to me, a useful tactic in a still relatively stable, relatively functional Western democracy. We don't have the same catastrophic circumstances in terms of you know societal decay that were happening in Germany in the 1980s, so I, that's the reason I don't approve of that tactic. Is that America is not there yet? There's no, right. uh, you know. Um, that's how I feel too. Old World War, <laughs> you ever watch any World War II movies about like the French Resistance and stuff like that? Uh, a while ago, I did, but it's been a long time, so I probably remember about five minutes of it. Yeah, well, you know, there's a time for that kind of stuff, but this this society is not at the point where we need to like be engaging in revolutionary action to affect positive change. It's just not there yet. I mean, if things, if things decay, collapse, you know what I mean? Like really, really collapse, then I can probably understand that kind of, that kind of um, behavior because you don't have an existing order. You're not being protected by an existing order. You're just, you're, you're defending yourself in a vacuum of chaos. Sure, that makes sense. That's pretty much how I feel about it, too. I don't think that that kind of tactic is never, ever necessary, but I definitely think that where we are right now, it's counterproductive. Um, if we ever get to the point where, yes, like, you know, if Donald Trump sends his dudes in to spray down a bunch of protesters, well, then we're at that point. <laughs> okay, maybe we need to be violent. Yeah. <laughs> Black Bloc, in my opinion, is, 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 uh, is relevant in terms of once once the state throws out the rule book, then we throw out the rule book too. There's no way that I'm going to play fair once um, once the law is not being respected by the people that actually make the law. I have no interest in abiding, you know, by a rule that's not even that's not even being sure. respected. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. So that's what Black Block is meant to do. But can we agree yeah. that that's probably not how people are using it right now? Like when you see the black oh, yeah, blockers, yeah. like what did you think? Okay, yeah. let me just ask you first. What was your opinion of the um, the riots that happened in Berkeley? Both of them, I think maybe even three of them now. Okay, so so the 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 onus, the responsibility for those Berkeley riots has been increasingly fallen to the right wing. I'll give you that. The third one was more on them, and the first one was definitely more on us. And I think that people, the, rea the reason the first one was so tempestuous is we had just had Trump get elected. Trump has white nationalists in his administration. Those white nationalists are connected to a publication that Miley Annopoulos used to work for, and we all freaked out. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and, we, and, 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 and terror, in terror, like any group that feels like they've completely lost control, um, 
some people decided that they were going to tear the whole thing down because, uh, you know, it had lost legitimacy. Okay. So then they like emotionally overreacted, I guess you could say, yeah. out of fear, yeah. which is an, a perfectly understandable thing. But yeah. it, okay. But that, if that was a couple of people who did that, if that was a few people that did that, why did it all get pinned on Antifa as a Antifa? Antifa. God damn it. I stuck. I, I can't say it right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Um, oh, oh, the media, the media loves, the media loves to create monolithic narratives because they need to present you a hero and a villain for every, for the evening news. A lot of that stuff is media and particularly the right wing media um, creating. I mean, if you look back at the hippies of the 1960s, it was just the same. The narrative was just the same about hippies being violent and hippies being revolutionary communists and they're coming to kill your babies and all that stuff. It's just it's exaggeration and it, it's taking like 10 assholes and then blaming 100 people for what those 10 assholes did. Oh, interesting. And would you uh -huh. would you compare the 1960s hippies to the 2017's Antifa? Antifa? Ah. Antifa. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they were just like them. Can you say it for me once? <laughs> just say it for me once and then I'm going to try. Yeah, you can you can say antifa or anti-fascist or you know how maybe you I should just it. say anti-fascist because I know how to say that. Okay, <laughs> that's what I use. That's what I use. I use anti-fascist, even though not all anti-fascists are anti-fa necessarily. Right. It just rolls off the tongue a lot better, and the audience knows what we're talking about. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, would you compare then the antifa movement to the hippies? Yeah, they were just like us. They lived in communes. They, you know, they, they, people forget that hippies were very militant and hippies would riot really? and hippies would break shit, you know? Yeah, Wait, people, how did I not know this? Think, I thought they were all about peace, love, sex, and drugs. That's why I've always identified yeah, with them. Yeah, but that, that, you know, ask, you need to remember that the, the, you know, the image of Woodstock of hippies is only one part of the revolutionary history of the 1960s and especially people of color during that time. Because, you know, uh, uh, the college kids were out there getting high and, and, and you know, uh, dancing to Jefferson Airplane. But, you know, there was a lot of ground level um, insurrectionary activism happening at that time. And, you know, on Berkeley campus, campus shit got real. Like it really got real like it did now. Yeah. And it was a very similar era because Nixon and Trump were very... It's fascinating because the 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 the, the antifa of that era reaction to Nixon coming in and going totally fascist, and then Trump now is like an echo, and he's already because like 2000, 2010, you didn't see antifa busting shit up because of Obama, and you didn't see them busting stuff up because Mitt Romney was going to talk somewhere. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> You're you? right. It's very different. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. very very different. So, so then what do you, do you think, okay, so Antifa as a group, does it have an overall purpose or is it just a, does it have an overall purpose? Well, Antifa is a, is a series of loosely connected satellite groups with an overall moral philosophy about aggressively confronting fascists and protecting community, marginalized communities from uh, fascist harassment and, and hate crimes. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a long, there's a, there's a through line of anti-racism uh, in the movement. So, I mean, it's like asking if like the, the California Republicans and the Tories in London are like, like, are they, are they affiliated necessarily? No, but they base, have a basically similar moral commitment to free market capitalism, you know? Right. Right. Okay. So, Okay, so then you say aggressively. What techniques mm -hmm. would you say uh, are like condoned or encouraged or are part of like the Antifa uh, uh, philosophy that are you are y'all willing to employ in that aggressive defense? Depends what the other side's doing. Give me a, give me a theoretical situation of what I'm, who I'm confronting. Um. Okay. Like I. I this is the first thing that came to my mind. I actually didn't mean to bring this up, but uh, the Richard Spencer punch for one thing, he's there. Uh -huh. What does, what is Antifa's like idea behind that? Was that okay to them just because of who he that is? <laughs> that wasn't organized. That wasn't organized at all. You okay. wanna, you so wanna, it wasn't an Antifa person that did it. 
do me a favor. Okay. Look at that video very clo- very closely next time you get a chance. Yeah. And you will notice that the person who punched Richard Spencer, the other Antifa that were there, pulled him off and told him to stop being an asshole. Oh. As they dragged Richard Spencer away, the other young kids grabbed the guy and said, what the fuck are you doing? You know, I didn't even ask if I, is it a little okay for you to immediately use foul language on this? Oh, yeah, yeah. I cuss all the time. Cuss away, dude. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So they grabbed <laughs> him and they were like, they were like, what the fuck are you doing? Relax, cut it out, and they dragged him away, and, and, and it was over. It was a fight, like a bar fight. It wasn't like they organized to punch Richard Spencer in the face. See, One I was under the wrong away. impression, and it was almost like I felt like it had somewhat been planned or at least encouraged and applauded mm-hmm. by the rest of the yeah. Antifa people. It was one dude. Spencer was being a smug, condescending prick, and <laughs> he, he made somebody lose their temper. Listen, I mean, I'm, I am not, I am not the most violent person you ever met, but I have been in bar fights, and bar fights happen, and yeah. they involve one person saying something stupid and another person reacting to that stupid thing, and someone getting punched. Okay. It's not a political act. <laughs> it was, it was a, it was a, a personal disagreement. A heat of the moment, people. emotional reaction. To- and I, and it, I totally Antifa, get that. Yeah. Okay, it, so see, Antifa I was wrong. Home. I thought, yeah. um, I thought Antifa was like totally cool because I personally am against the punch. I don't think it's like I don't think that was a good idea. Um, I don't think it was right to do, and I hate Richard Spencer, and I you know wish him ill will in other ways, but not by you know one of us doing it to him. Um, but yeah. I was under the impression that the whole anti-fascist group was like, yes, that's how we need to proceed. Yeah. No, you will not find anything in local literature that talks about, and again, you can go to extreme fringe ends of anything to find nut jobs. True. You can find, you can find the Democrats that, w- that are planning to take some kind of terrorist action against the Republican Party, and those people don't typify the average Democrat by a mile. Right. And conversely, you've got Republican Second Amendment nut jobs that want to go shoot Gabby Gifford, they don't typify the mainstream of the Republican Party. They just don't. These right. are fringe weirdos. Yeah. So a lot of people criticize me because you, you probably came across me as someone that a bunch of liberal um, skeptics criticize for being uh, indifferent, indifferent to the suffering of Richard Spencer. I didn't endorse the punch. All I said was that I don't care. Right. I don't care. If someone, if someone tomorrow... Um, ran over Richard Spencer with his with a car and killed him. I wouldn't celebrate that, but I also wouldn't care. I, I don't right. understand why I'm ab- obliged to care about when something bad happens to a bad person. I don't. I don't give a shit. I understand that. There's nothing. It doesn't see, necessarily mean him. that you condone it or that you would do it or that no. you would encourage it, but you just don't necessarily care that somebody else did it. No, I don't care. I don't know when I'm a, I, I don't know him on a personal level. We're not comrades in any way. I mean, we're not we're not politically aligned. So, like, I don't understand why people are like, oh, but you should be mad about this. I'm like, why should I care? The guy doesn't consider me. I'm queer. I'm mixed race. I'm from the inner city. To that guy, I'm not a person. So please don't ask me to cry for someone that doesn't think I'm a person. Sorry. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I totally understand that. And I, I personally don't have mm-hmm. any problem with you not caring. I mean, I think that I think a lot of people yeah. don't care. Um, it's, mm-hmm. I, I, but I am glad to hear that you don't necessarily think it was a good idea. <laughs> no, I mean, again, it was one person that got carried away. And, um, the best, the most positive thing I said about it was if, if Richard Spencer was standing near me and he was saying something about, for example, mixed race people, right. Mm-hmm. And he was saying something dehumanizing about mixed race people or gay people or women or whatever it was. And I took it upon myself to punch him in the face, I would do it. And then I would do the time associated with having punched him in the face and then go home. Right. And you wouldn't say Antifa made me do it. No, it's not morally right. I just decided to punch the guy in the face and now it's time to go to jail. And when I'm done going to jail, I go home. Totally understand. And I think that that's a big problem in, in all of these groups, right? Is that we want to pin what ha- what one or two of the people in that group do or even a hundred of the people in that group do on the entire group. And so many people well, would gonna... say, if you punch that guy, Antifa made you do it. And in, and you're saying, no, I just did that out of my own free will because the fucker needed a punch. <laughs> right. That, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, if, if there was a random dude on the street 
uh, you know, screaming about niggers and all that stuff. And if it struck me the wrong way, I punch him in the face, and then I go to jail, and then I do my time, and then I go home. Like, I don't understand how that's like. Oh, you're you're the real fascist. I'm like, no, I lost my temper. Someone's doing something disgusting. I punch him in the face. Right, right. But well, and I mean that br- that brings you to the whole idea of free speech, right? I mean, yes, he has the legal mm-hmm. right to go around calling people niggers, but um, I also have the legal right to get pissed off about it and tell you what a piece of shit you are. <laughs> Yeah, your, your freedom and, and also, of speech doesn't mean you don't that you're not going to get judged by it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean there there is also an idea to me of uncivil disobedience. I know civil disobedience is generally applauded, and I'm not against civil disobedience. Civil disobedience is important, but to me, uncivil disobedience is. Um, I'll tell you a story. Okay. Around the end of uh, around the end of World War II, the filmmaker Orson Welles was in a bar in France after the Vichy had just left. And he, it was closing time about 2 in the morning. You can check the story out. And um, the Nazis had just gone down, I think, two years. This is two years after Hitler um, blew his own brains out. And um, some guy at the bar was um, singing a German, uh, not German, a Nazi uh, patriotic song. The guy's drunk. Mm-hmm. And a woman behind the bar who had survived the Vichy occupancy and the Nazi occupancy of France started to cry. And so Wilson Wells, who's a big man, he's about my height. I'm about 6'5", he's about an inch shorter than me. Wow. Um, saw the woman crying, stood up, grabbed the man by the collar and knocked him out flat, cold. <laughs> he did it because the guy was a Nazi. Yes. I, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that situation when somebody goes, "Oh, he's free, free, blah, 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 blah." I, I, I don't know how to say that situation. I don't. I don't know what to say about right or wrong in a situation like that. Yeah. I have no idea. What What do you think? I think the violence is never right. That's my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless you are physically being threatened and you are physically defending somebody. Uh, personally, yeah. I mean, like, I can't say that I didn't go, yeah, he deserved a punch. <laughs> but mm-hmm. on the other hand, do I really, would I have been the one to punch him? No, I don't really think that I would have been okay with that myself. It, but it's, mm. I, I get that it's an under, it, it, it's a hard thing because on one hand, you're like, he is, he is harming that woman, right? I mean, she is having a, an emotionally harmful response to what he's doing. Yeah. So yeah. in that regard, you're defending her. I get that. But right. could you right. not defend her um, verbally as because that's what he's using? He's using words, then we should probably use words. I think that's what my thing is. If he uses violence, then yeah. I'm okay with using violence. If you're using words, then I think we should use words. Yeah, but I feel like I feel like these internet skeptics like Sargon, um, who live behind the keyboard, have never been in a, in a real life situation like that where you. Things are not um, things are not simple when well, you're out true. in the real world. But it's very easy to Sunday morning quarterback a situation like that. And I'm not saying you're wrong for having your opinion, but I don't know how I myself can go, um, you know, point my finger and go, that's wrong because I wasn't there because I didn't see a woman crying because I didn't see the emotional violence because of, you know you understanding who I am and where I come from and how I feel about um, this sort of uh, sadistic verbal abuse. Um, that's what put me in this movement. What put me in this movement is, is, is watching a, a culture of cruelty uh, hiding behind the fact, I'm not hitting you, I'm not hitting you, I'm not hitting you, I'm mentally torturing you, I'm not hitting you, I'm, oh, wow. I'm verbally dehumanizing you, I'm not hitting you, I'm not hitting you, I'm not hitting you. As long as I don't hit anybody, I'm a nice guy. No, I'm not, I'm not going to back that. Yeah, I understand. How do you deal with that? I, and I and mm-hmm. I and I can see why and I and I can see why I might be wrong. I mean, I still am. I still just. No, cannot... I'm not saying I'm not saying you're wrong. But my point is that sometimes justice is not about doing what's right. It's just about <laughs> it, both things are morally what's morally right and what's just aren't always the same thing, in my opinion, from my view of the world. Okay. Okay. I understand that. So Just then, because someone deserves something doesn't make you right. You know what I mean? Well, right. But that's how I feel about the Spencer punch. It's like even if he deserves the punch, I don't think that made the puncher right. If, if maybe, yeah. I, maybe I misunderstood what you're saying. But that's how I feel. No, you're it. right. You're, you got it. You got it. You got it. Dead on target. <laughs> the guy deserves to get hit. 
he 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 deserved a punch, but it wasn't right for him to get punched. That's absolutely correct, and I and I concur with you yeah. on that. I and that's a, that's an interesting yeah. place to be in, isn't it? Because there, like you said, there really mm-hmm. is no definitive right or wrong in that particular situation. Well, I say that, and then as I say that, I go, but in my mind, it was definitively wrong to punch him. Yeah. But let's get off the Spencer thing yeah. because that was just like the, sure. the first thing that came to my mind. But the thing that I really wanted to talk with you, because that is just like an offhand sort of thing that happened once and everybody has a different opinion mm-hmm. of it. And um, But the sure. thing I really wanted to talk to you about is this sort of organized um, protest slash rioting that, that a lot of the Antifa people are doing. Um, like it started in Berkeley, but then... Um, mm-hmm. And and we'll talk about that. But it did it did extend to these other two. And I looked myself for some way to prove that the right started the violence. Because mm-hmm. I know that the right went there looking for a fight. And their thing is that the alt-right um, finally got tired of being beaten down by the anti-fascists. And so... Oh, well, Sorry, I'm just saying, like, that's this that's is, yeah, and yeah. from an and, and from an outsider point of view, somebody who has been trying to understand this, because as a liberal, I am always mm-hmm. constantly, or whatever the hell I am, a progressive leftist, I don't know what the fuck I am. Anyway, as a person on the left, um, mm-hmm. I am continually confronted when I try to talk about my liberalism or my, or my left mm-hmm. policies or whatever, I am continually confronted by this, well, but Antifa. But Antifa. Mm-hmm. So it is a thing that yeah. is constantly, I'm constantly having to try to defend. So I have tried yeah, to. Yeah, they, they do that. Hold on. That's a tactic that, 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 that right wingers use to obfuscate the violent part of their movement. So as long as you're talking about Antifa, you're not talking about the neo Nazis that were on Ber- at Berkeley and in great numbers and recorded on tape beating, stabbing, and kicking people. So just remember that that's, that's an obfuscation tactic. What about Antifa? When you go back, like, wow, what about skinheads? And I'll go, what skinheads? Right, right. Well, okay, so what I, I'm just trying to say that from from my own, like, the research that I've done, and, and yes, of mm-hmm. course, we could go that far back, but I'm just trying to understand from this this rise of the Antifa thing. Um, and I've mm-hmm. tried to do my own research to because I wanted to be able to defend it, and I wanted to say, like, oh, well, the right does it too, and, you know, it's people on both sides. And that is true for the most part. Yeah. But from yeah. what I – from the research that I've done, it does appear mm-hmm. to be – and, again, I – I'm perfectly willing to admit I might be wrong, but it appears to be that, especially like with that first, okay, we we already admit that the anti-fascists started that first riot in Berkeley. Yeah, the the minor thing thing was on us. Right, okay, so we started that. He he baited us, he baited us because he wanted attention. And 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 we took the bait and we fucked ourselves and, and we took and the bait and we fucked ourselves. Yeah. And you would say mm-hmm. you were against the way that that went down, the rioting and the violence yeah, and the broke destroying a bunch property. Of bullshit. Not, none of that. None of that undermines fascism. Bashing Starbucks doesn't undermine fascism. Right. Um, breaking the, the windows at Bar- Berkeley just stopped kids from being educated about fascism. So again, it was just it was just a, it was it was the equivalent of a sports riot after the LA Lakers win. Right. It was like, like a temp- temper equivalent. tantrum. It felt a little bit like a temper yeah. tantrum to me. Yeah. yeah. Now, the third riot is the one that I want to submit for your consideration in reference to. OK, but wait, let me just say side. really quick. See, from what I'm Sorry, seeing, no. though, is that 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 first one started it. And so then all the right started going and and oh, wait. OK, I, another thing that I that I, I wonder about is when we have um, pro tr- or like anti-Trump things, and we have our protests, there's not an awful lot of alt-right that are coming up to counter-protest. But it seems like at almost all the Trump rallies, there is a group of the Antifas there to, like, counter-protest. And those, even the littler ones, I'm not even talking about the big Berkeley riots, but even the littler, like, Mm -hmm. Trump things, you can find that that a group of Antifa will show up, and there is almost always a fight when that happens. Sometimes it's the antis starting it the antifa is starting it sometimes it's the right starting it but the but my thing is like but the antifa showed up at their protest knowing yeah. that was going to be an issue so when right. you look at the whole thing together it does look like the right has a little bit of what they're saying is a little bit true in that look the antifa started this they started following us mm-hmm. all around starting this shit 
finally we got tired of it. And so we've risen up to defend ourselves. Now, I'm not saying that I agree with the way that they're doing things either. I think both of the extremists are in the complete wrong. But that is their stance. And I am having a hard time disproving that stance. Here is what I would submit. Escalation in, in this conflict um, has come from the fact that, look, look, uh, you, you and me have been in, in politics for a little while, right? at least being like, like following politics, right? You follow politics like during the Obama era, like mm-hmm. the late Bush era, right? Mm-hmm. For the most did, part. Did there was see, times where I looked away, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> so the thing is, did you see, did you see? Antifa showing up to tax day rallies where the Tea Party were. No, I don't know. Did they? I don't remember. No, no, thing. Like if if you if you follow the right wing, right? The the most recent movement of the right wing before this modern Trumpism mm-hmm. was the Tea Party, right? right? During the Obama era, it was called the Tea Party. The right. Tea Party was the more the more aggressive and violent oriented side during that era. The left was much more pacifistic, and the right was walking around strapped with AK forty sevens at the rallies. I see against Obama, right? I see, and I didn't you realize that. I didn't. I didn't know that. See, th- that is. Yeah. I I did spend a period of time in my life where I I couldn't look at politics. I was too like sad about the whole thing. So, I um, I understand. I uh, I that that I did not know about that. So the Tea Party then. So then you could say that it is because we are now the party uh, in opposition to who's in power, then that requires us to be more aggressive. Whereas when they were not the party that was in power, it required them to be more aggressive. I don't think requires is the word that I would use, but I would say is inevitable. Um, I think that the right wing in this country had a paranoid fantasy of Obama uh, being the beginning of an authoritarian communist state. And I think that the radical ends of the left, which I, re- that with, which I belong to, are highly concerned that Trump is the beginning of a cycle leading towards um, actual fascism. And I think that when you believe those things, um, the, this, this kind of militarization is inevitable. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, so then what do you feel? Okay, then, so I'm going to go back to my original question that I think I interrupted you and got away from. And <laughs> no, it's fine. It's um, fine. Yeah. How do you feel then about the, well, wait, I think you did answer how you felt about that first Berkeley riot anyway, and that it was mm-hmm. inappropriate yeah. and, and uncalled for and, yeah. over, and overreaction. So then, um, yeah. so then going forward then to the, okay, let's just talk about the other two Berkeley riots then. I know the third one you're saying it is your contention then, and I would love to see some links about this, that, that in the third one, mm-hmm. it was the right that was the aggressors. So what do you yeah, think about the I violence mean, then at the end there, at the other two riots, I guess is what I'm asking. Uh, look, my Milo Yiannopoulos is a hate monger. Milo Yiannopoulos is not harmless, but he is not going to, um, he is not going to, become the leader of a fascist movement because right. of the fact that he's Jewish, because of the fact that he's gay. Uh, we've already seen him get cast out of becoming a thought leader in the right because of those things. Right. Maybe, although so he seems think, like he might be coming back, but anyway. <laughs> uh, but he's still, he's still a pariah. He's, he's, he's been, he's been um, condemned to the fringes. Yeah, let's hope. So that that's helps. the first one, though. But then the second one was the Ann Coulter thing, right? What was the second? Was, yeah. was the Ann Coulter one the second or the third one? Ann Coulter was the second, and the third one was um, Peta, Brittany Pettibone, D'Amigo, and uh, Rich Black. Um, oh, see, I, the, didn't even, I don't even the, know those people. Okay. So let's talk about the second rally. Okay. Right? Let's talk about Ann, Ann Coulter, right? So. Okay. Or orders of magnitude of threat, right? That's the question here. Is like how how threatening, how much of a threat is A, B, and C? Milo is Milo is someone that should not be dismissed because if his language about Muslims catches on, uh, you are going to see people getting interned and executed. Full stop. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, now, Islamophobia is mainstream in America. 
in Western Europe. Yeah. Do you agree? Oh, yeah, 100%. It's, I would say it is, yeah, for sure. It's, it's incredibly mainstream. If you are an anti-Semite, you're immediately cast out. If you're an Islamophobe, well, that's a legitimate concern. They are terrorists. Yeah. So sad. Do you see the problem? I see a huge so problem. It, yeah. So but if how Milo is, that... is Go ahead. Uh -huh. if, Milo, if Milo is running around and meeting these impressionable kids and speaking to them in their language and affecting uh, this kind of hip uh, you know, it's cool to be an Islamophobe. It's, it's cool to be uh, a misogynist. It's cool to be transphobic. Um, Milo becoming the vanguard of the conservative movement is dangerous. Ann Coulter becoming the vanguard of the, of the conservative movement is even more dangerous. And the people that came to the front of the third rally, particularly the guy who punched the woman, that's probably the big takeaway from the third rally, is, is the anti fall woman being punched by the Oh, skinhead. right, 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 right. Um, that guy is extremely dangerous. Nathan D'Amigo yeah. um, makes Richard Spencer look like a Republican. Nathan D'Amigo is a convicted felon. Oh, really? He tried to, yeah, he's a Iraq war veteran who tried to execute a cab driver because he thought he looked Arab. Oh, wow. To me, the Negro was converted to his philosophy from uh, while in prison, uh, while serving uh, time in prison for attempted murder. So the Negro is a neo-Nazi. The Negro is from prison. The Negro is that guy. He is the one who brings the guns. He is the one who does the punching. He is the one that executes people. So Richard Spencer is nothing compared to Nathan the Negro and what comes next. Richard Spencer is a, is a failed Republican. Milo is a failed Republican. Ann Coulter is a failed Republican. Nathan D'Amigo is danger. And was he speaking that at that third one? Yeah. He was going to speak yeah. at the third he one? Is, he is the one that brought the skinheads uh, to, to run security for a female white nationalist named Brittany Pettibone. She was having a, a talk about freedom of speech and race realism and all that stuff. Mm. If, if you sorry go ahead no 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 no, I, no, no, no. I, I don't want to i don't want to interrupt you because my question was going to bring us in a different direction please go do you know much about the woman that was punched i don't i don't i honestly don't know a lot about that third riot at all mm. um because it kind of came like right mm. on the tail of the culture one and so they kind of got skipped or put together in my head um yeah. so i didn't even really know what that third one was so the mm -hmm. the what was her name again uh, Rachel Salinas, I think it was. Is the white nationalist who was going to speak? No, 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 Brittany Pettibone. Brittany Pettibone was the white nationalist. Um, Rose Rosalma, Louise Rosalma was the was the anti father that got punched in the face. Okay, Nathan and Domingo full disclosure, was, I should say yeah. I don't care that she got punched in the face. Just like I don't care. I'm sorry, she showed up there looking for a fight. <laughs> Like, I don't think that oh, it's any on, different that on, she on. has a Here's... pussy versus a dick. I just don't. Like, she... No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I respect your opinion, but let me give you the mitigating factors for her punch as opposed to Richard Spencer's punch. Okay. She was at the protest to take pictures. You can, you can find the interview. Check, check my video called The Freedom Size, and it has her interview. She did not go there for violence. She was a photographer with anti-fascist action. She quoted Inglorious Bastards and said something about Nazi scouts as a joke. I use the same joke on my Twitter profile. She was there with a camera to, to take photographs of the protest. But how the did those, problem, but how did the right know, how would the right have known that if there's a, if there's a big kerfuffle and she's included in the group of people that are punching them, how do they know she was only there to take pictures? Especially when you, when she comes into the frame, she looks like she's like in the fray. That's long after the fight started. The, the part that gets left out is the fact that the Proud Boys, as they're called, were the ones who rallied towards the Antifa. Here's, here's, here's the mistake we made. These people were speaking, and we were trying to bark them down, even though I wasn't there, but I'm, I'm using we in terms of movement right. people, right? Mm -hmm. They were trying to bark them down. They were setting off M80s to undermine them speaking. And then someone set off a smoke grenade, which it, is harmless. But it, what, it, Was it someone on the Antifa side? Someone on the Antifa side set off a smoke grenade. Okay. Um, and the grenade, the smoke made people panic. 
and the right side uh, thinking that they were being attacked with, you know, ordnance, you know, like actual bombs, mm-hmm. rushed the Antifa because they thought that this was the beginning of, of, of us, of us, you know, using grenades or something against them. Mm-hmm. I don't blame them for freaking out. Yeah, I don't blame them either. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I do blame them for running at us instead of running away from the bomb. Because if they thought that we were using bombs, you would think they would run away. But they well, ran towards us and started punching people. So I'm not going to take this whole. They were innocent. If, if, I, if, a, if a run-of-the-mill person was at a protest and bombs started going off, if they really believed in this pacifism, free speech thing, they would have run away from the violence. Instead, they ran towards it and started beating people down. Right. So that may, I mean, I'm not saying I, they are definitely in, I, I don't blame them at all for being, thinking that they were being attacked and re, right. reacting to that. I agree that, you know, maybe they should have reacted to it in a different way. I, but I mean, I actually mm-hmm. totally agree. I, in my mind, both sides are equally wrong. That's what I'm saying. I'm not mm-hmm. saying one side was right. any righter than the other or any more moral than the other. In my mind, right. they were both wrong. And I can't help but think that, that Antifa using smoke grenades or, or, or the M whatever they were using like that is is aggression yeah. even if it's ones sure. that you know you know it's not going to hurt anybody they don't know that it's not mm-hmm. going to hurt anybody so right. they in my opinion i still think they started that i still feel like they started that even though it was the right coming at them after they thought the bomb was you know more than it was or whatever um they incited it in my opinion because it wouldn't have happened yeah, if they I, didn't I, do that yeah. right right but the, but the but the, the 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 reaction of the right wing at that I mean it was it was people beating down um, Louise was almost beaten down by five men before she got punched in the face by uh, Nathan Venigo. She picked up a bottle because she was being beaten. I remember part of her testimony was that she got she right before she picked up an empty bottle off the sidewalk to defend herself, she had been kneed in the face by one of the uh, one of the Nazis. And when she was holding the bottle, Nathan Domingo runs in and punches her in the face on top of her having been kicked. Uh, I think she had a couple of broken bones. Um, and that's terrible. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm glad she got kicked any more than I'm glad that Richard Spencer got punched. But yeah. I am saying that I don't know. I That was one thing that really surprised me, actually, that that, that mm-hmm. the Louise thing came out of that. Because um, mm-hmm. if she had been a man, it wouldn't have been an issue she would have just been part of the fray um yeah. and in and from everything i saw now i know i'm i know that i wasn't there but what i'm saying is if i yeah. was there if i had been there and if i had been on the right yeah. side for whatever reason yeah. I'm, I'm, in, I'm among the nazis right <laughs> um and yeah. i had seen this group of people all fighting and i had seen her flailing around looking like she was fighting whether she's actually fighting or not she looked like she was part of the fight i would have considered her fair game even if i was a man do you see what I'm saying? Like yeah, in, in their that, minds, see, she problem. was being violent. Yeah. And, oh, and that's a problem because she's a woman. Well, it's, a, it's 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 about force, isn't it? I mean, you know, a man punching a man and a man punching a woman are radically different things. They're radically different. They're just they're just biologically different things. I mean. Well, and I agree with you. Um, if the man is starting it. But if the woman has started the fight, which is what it looked like now, whether we have now found out that's not actually the the case or not, I don't know. I haven't seen her testimony, so I can't speak to that. But in that moment, it looked like she was throwing punches. It looked like she was involved. So why Uh now does a man have to hold his punches when she started it? I mean, it looks like anyway, if you're in that group, it looks like she started it. And so you're based, you're basing your decisions on what, you appear to see right now and right now it looks like this bitch is about to come start some fights with us and i don't mean a bitch why should like i like why her should, uh, yeah. i watched oh. an interview with her i think i watched your thing about her she seems like a really yeah. cool person but i'm saying in yeah. that moment you don't know any of that in that moment all you see yeah. is this bitch with the bottle right who's flailing mm-hmm. around yeah. with a bunch of other people who are fighting a bunch of people so why right. is she different then, yeah, I don't, like I don't a, think that I don't think that I don't think that any I've, I've never seen Antifa beat down a Nazi woman, no matter what she had in her hand. I've never seen a, a female skinhead get five on one by is that a bunch right? of Antifa. And I think that, yeah, I think that I think there's a moral reason for that. Um, I do think that violence committed by men against women is different than violence 
by women committed against men just because of the like just the size. Just, just, okay. the, just the, we'll have the, to agree to disagree on that one because I, to- I totally disagree yeah. with that. But I mean, I, I get where you're coming from as far as like just muscle strength and whatnot. But um, I, I yeah. have I have pretty strong opinions that that's not how I feel. If I go up to a man okay. and I punch him, I have no problem with him punching me back. Like I call I, I started it. I don't see why okay, I should but- be able to use my boobs as a defense, like against an action that I started. I'm saying how, what, my concern is the size proportion between the man that hit her and the man and, and the girl herself. Did it, it look like a much of a size difference? Because he looks like a little twerp to me. Yeah, but he obviously he's an ex-military guy. He's an ex-convict. This is obviously a this is obviously a very strong man. This is a this is a strength conditioned man punching a skinny hippie girl in the face. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not. If, a, if she got into a fist fight and some skinhead girl punched her in the face, she signed up for it. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. It's, it's a woman fighting a woman, and it's not like it, – it, it, it's just to me, it's, it's like I'm six foot five inches tall. I'm 300 pounds, and, and my second job is working as a club bouncer. And I've been punched in the face by women before. And you know what I did? Called the cops. I never I – never, yeah. I've never hit back against a woman That's because I'm a physically – so you I, have to think of the, the order of magnitude. Imagine, uh, imagine a five foot four inch, 150 pound woman hitting me, and then me hitting her back at my size. It's killer. Yeah, I mean, Sorry. and I agree that's unfair. <laughs> but I go back to she shouldn't have hit you first. <laughs> I mean, if she's there not willing to take a punch back from the person from that she's you. punching, then she shouldn't be punching that person. There are ways for him to have defended himself that wouldn't involve her cold cocking her in the face. Yeah. Well, I mean, and listen, I mean, this Nathan guy from everything I've heard about him, he's a, de- de- you know, despicable little testicle man. Um, and I'm, yeah. you know, I don't care about him at all. And I and I certainly yeah. would never defend anything he would do like as a specific. Yeah. Right. But um, yeah. when you're talking yeah. in general terms where a woman happens to be part of a fray of fight, I just I can't get on board with saying that he was any worse for hitting her than he would have been for hitting if she had been a boy. I just can't. I mean, but that doesn't mean that I'm right. It just means that's like an opinion that I can't seem to break free from. <laughs> no, no, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I, I understand where you're coming from. But the, but the, the thing with the thing with the thing with the the escalation that I was talking about, meaning that Milo was relatively liberal on social issues. I don't like Milo. He's despicable scum. But he was he was moderate and tolerant on certain certain issues to an extent for what he was. He was to the left of Ann Coulter. And then Ann Coulter was to the right of him. And then Domingo is far to the right of both of them. Yeah. Spencer, after the Battle of Berkeley, Spencer is negligible. He is no longer a movement leader. The people the people really? that saw the shop because because he's not a he man, he's a sissy boy. Have you seen Richard Spencer? He's a he's a plantation owning little rich boy. They want Domingo. Domingo is the hero they were dreaming of. He's an ex-Marine, ex-convict, and he loves to punch. Yeah. Interesting. If you watch, check out, check out the transformation. If you if you see these alt-right people on Twitter, you will see the shift in their memes from celebrating Spencer and his uh, verbal acuity to now celebrating the fact that uh, Domingo is a proper sort of general patent type uh, leader for their wow. movement as they and would you enter say the age that that of confrontation. Is, would you say that that is somewhat um, influenced by the fact that Richard got punched and Domingo punched? It, it has to do with the fact that Richard Spencer is, is a wimp. A wimp. And when he did get punched, he didn't, he didn't do the proper street Nazi thing. The proper street Nazi thing was for him to to get into a full blown fist fight instead of being pulled away and crying. Yeah. So he proves that he is a cuck to them. He's not a proper a Ubermensch alpha guy. Gotcha. Gotcha. Don't underestimate how important the canonization of Nathan Domingo is about him punching a woman in the face. There were many Nazis that day who punched a lot of male hippies. It is about him punching a feminist in the face and that actually raised them up in their eyes raised him up in their eyes 
he is a champion for, for, for punishing feminists. The way that they've always, that the way that the men within that movement have always wanted to punish them, which is to punch them in the face. Wow. Interesting. That's sad. Mm -hmm. That's sad. I hate that. I mean, I don't think that, I don't think he should have been vilified, but I definitely don't think he should be heroified either. (laughs) Like, that's the wrong way. You don't have to vilify Nathan Zemigo. He's a villain. There's, there's, well, I mean, I, I don't mean, think he should research. be. I don't personally think he should be vilified for the punching of the girl, but I do think he should be vilified for his mm-hmm. stance on the world. You know, that's disgusting for sure. But I'm just saying, yeah. for the, the punching yeah. itself, I don't think that he should have gotten anything out of that. Honestly, just either like, one way or the other. Listen, but it wasn't, it wasn't neutral self defense. Just like the guy who punched Spencer was was engaging in a in a calculated political act. Domingo knew who to hit and why. He grabbed that hippie girl because she was perfect. You think you think that he, in icon. that moment when everything's so chaotic that he actually had the wherewithal to think that through like that? He chose her. She didn't rush at him. She did not rush at him. He chose her. Out of all the people in that crowd, he chose her. It claim, he claimed it's because she, has a, she had a bottle in his hand, in her hand, but I... I am, I am skeptical about his pure motives. I think that, like <laughs> well, any fascist, I think that's 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 uh, that's what's fair. That's fair to be skeptical of his uh, his <laughs> motives for sure. I think that all all fascists throughout history have made sure that um, that when they engage in violence, it has it has it has um, an iconographic uh, importance. Interesting. Well, I have seen them like iconograph a lot of that stuff. <laughs> um, like the, they loved the, that the they loved that the girl had done amateur porno. Yeah, <laughs> they loved that the girl had done amateur porno, so they could shame her. They loved that she was a a, a friendly hippie chick vegan. She but none of that they knew until afterward. No, right? but you could assume a lot of if you look at Louise Rosama and go, uh, you know. I'm, uh, uh, on a scale of one to 100, how much do you think this girl's a vegan? Like, <laughs> how, well, no, I mean, I agree. If, 100, if you have time to plan it better? out, I just don't think in that moment, I mean, maybe, I, I don't think that in that moment there was that much thought going into it. It was a very no, chaotic No, but I'm saying that, that the way he's used it afterwards, the, yeah. the reason that he's become a celebrity in their world is because she's everything they hate. That, yeah. Just everything they think is like a degenerate into society. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, listen, her, her pornography is not like, um, how do I put this? I feel like there are feminist forms of pornography, and there are like commercial capitalist forms of pornography. Does that make sense? Yeah. Her pornography was like homemade, um, like, like sex positive pornography. Yeah. So, like, it's not like she went from being like a bleached out, breast implanted capitalist porn star. She enjoyed her sexuality and she made a few videos. In my um, mind, for... it wouldn't have mattered what kind of porn she did. Who cares if she did porn? That, who cares? No, no, but I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, like, even her porn, they bitched about her porn being bad porn. And oh, like, really? This is bad. <laughs> yeah, they said. We don't hate her because she's a porn star. It's because her porn is bad. It's because her and porn it's, and I, is And I watch this so that I can get an impression of it. And I'm like, oh, she's enjoying herself. Whoops. Oh, no. Well, no, you know what? That's true. In, in, uh, in porn, that's true. It's supposed to be the men. Well, that's not true, though, because women do all that fake uh, uh, stuff that's so, so fake. No, no, this is, that's the thing. <laughs> it was very authentic pornography. She was just masturbating. And they, they was wasn't good enough. Masturbating. It wasn't good enough. It yeah, was, she, it was she, feminist she, porn. Feminist porn. Yeah, it is. It was explicitly feminist porn. She had an unshaved <laughs> vagina. She was engaged. There were no cuts or angles or lighting or anything like that. It was just her celebrating her own pleasure. And that's what made them so mad. Ah, oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I definitely, I, I, yeah, I don't think we're going to necessarily agree on whether or not she should have gotten punched, but that certainly is no. very sad to me that they have now been able to take that and use it to even further like his status more and all of that. That's, that's very, very sad to me. And stupid, yeah. like, too. I mean, look, like you, why you know, would you be? Yeah. Why would you be going, oh, yeah, you're such a tough guy because you hit a girl. Like, why would that even yeah. be? 
something that you would celebrate. Wouldn't you be like, oh, you hit a girl? Like, you know, of course you hit a girl because you should have hit a boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you were scared. Yeah, that, that my concern is that they would say what you say, which is the bitch had it coming. Not in those words of meaning that they would take, you're, you're making a reasoned argument, meaning of order of the magazine. You made a reasoned argument. They would then take your words and say it, but what they would mean is the bitch had it coming. Yeah. You meant, you meant, you meant that if you engage in violence, there's going to be repercussions. They mean, I hate you, mommy, punch the bitch. Uh. But they'll use your words and you'll go, oh, these people agree with me. Like, not you specifically, but I'm saying, people right. will use your, your innocent phrasing, which is about liberal moralism, and then the Nazis will go, yeah, use your words, and then under the breath go, I punched the bitch. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that sucks. No, 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 you didn't do anything wrong, but I'm just I'm asking you, I'm, I'm asking you in the future, as your friend, when, when, when you hear someone like, like Spencer, or Millennial Woes, or Domingo, saying something and you go, wow, I, that's the way I would have said that. Remember that they don't mean what you mean. They're okay. just using your language to persuade you. I gotcha. Okay. That's, yeah. that's a good tip. That's a good thing to know. <laughs>